welcome to the next project. This is a learning curve endeavor that I'm undertaking and it has to do with pickup winding. I've wound a few pickups already, but I am by no means a professional. What we're gonna do today is wind three separate P90 pickups, all with a coil tap uh, included in the winding. And I'm winding each one slightly different just to see if there's a sweet spot for the coil tap based on a roughly a 10,000 total wind P90 bobbin. So let's get after it and start the next project. This is going to be a fairly simple and rather unscientific test uh, using three different P90 pickups. The first pickup will have 6,500 initial winds before the tap and 3,500 winds after for a total of 10,000. P92 will have 7,000 initial winds before the tap and 3,000 after. P93 will have 7,500 initial winds before the tap and 2,500 after real world winding count will vary a little bit as I'm doing this all by hand and I don't have a machine to automate the process. Getting the bobbin loaded up, giving it a few initial turns by hand just to make sure that the guides are roughly in the right place, spinning it up, running it a little bit slowly initially again to verify uh, I'm not going to have a big bird's nest of wire on top of the, the bench. little call out list of parts. I've got a wind counter, RPM readout, direction control, throttle, two sensors, a counter reset, and the wire guide. This is a pretty simple build overall and uh, you know for my ability I think it works pretty well. The top red LED readout is total winds of wire going on the bobbin. The green readout is RPMs and I'm actually starting to use that as a tension gauge also. When I run the um, RPM all the way up as fast as it'll go. If I notice the RPM dropping, I know that I'm putting more tension on it. If the RPMs ramp way up, um, I know I'm reducing tension. So I try to find a common way of winding uh, so I can replicate certain things. And here I've stopped at 6,553. I overshot my goal by 53 winds. I'm not going to take 53 winds off. I'm just gonna use it as is. And I have to fumble around a little bit to loop my wire lead out of the bobbin. I'm gonna put a little piece of pickup tape on it to hold everything in place and then resume winding. I need to look at other ways to uh, better see how the wire is going on the bobbin. The white backdrop does help, but I think maybe a light overhead might create a better shadow so I can make sure I'm putting on a nice even and square group of windings on the bobbin so it's not heavy in the middle and short on the sides or vice versa. And as we get close to reaching our total count of 10,017, I uh, now terminate the winding by putting a piece of uh, pickup tape over the bobbin just to hold everything in place. And I'll break the wire off a little bit long and we're ready for the next part of completing this bobbin. The flat work I'm using here already has two eyelets uh, pressed into it. It doesn't have three, so I can use the two that are included with the, the bobbin to solder in my start and my finish to the overall coil. But my tap I have to add slightly differently, and I'll do it in a similar fashion to how I do humbucker style pickups, where I run a lead along the side of the winding and it'll exit that way. So here I'm soldering on the start and finish leads, nipping away the extra wire, now getting ready to add the coil tap. 
lead, which will just be added to the side of the coil. And giving this pickup a quick DC check just to make sure it has continuity through it. And the total winding is 8.45 ohms. And at the tap, it is 5.19, give or take. The second and third P90 are slightly different style um, bobbins. They have slug magnets in them instead of bar magnets that the first P90 had. So that is one variable. Uh, they also have different color uh, flat work. Some people may say it's a sin to wax pot a P90, and that may be true. I don't know. I missed that sermon. But in my uh, attempt to do something almost non-scientific, I'm going to wax pot all three of these. Initially I do uh, two of them, then I had to take a phone call and came back and did the third one a little bit later. Here we can see I'm using a vacuum pump for bleeding automotive brakes and I use a, a ball mason jar, submerge the pickups in the, the molten wax and drawing it down under vacuum. And it's actually sucking air out of the windings. I'm aware that some people who wind pickups uh, say not to uh, vacuum pot pickups, saying it kills the sound, that they uh, prefer to just soak pickups in hot wax and that does a good enough job and that may be true. I think that would be a test for another day to compare a, a vacuum potted pickup and a soaked pickup and then cut them in half to see how well the wax penetrated. But I'm not doing that here. I'm just vacuum wax potting all of the pickups. Now that the fun part of the project is over, it's time to put on a science hat that I do not own. I have a computer and a cool little gizmo that I can put a charge through the pickups and create some bode plots, which is supposed to tell me where the resonant peaks are, both of the fully wound and the tap count. But that's just cool little squiggly spaghetti lines. What does it really mean? I don't know. I can also check the resistance of each pickup and also the gauze of the different magnets. I also need to take into account that there's really two different P90 style pickups that I'm working with. One has threaded pole pieces, bar magnets, and a metal plate in the bottom of the pickup. The other is just flatware with slug magnets, very much like a Stratocaster. So that's going to impact the sound also. My takeaway at this point is the higher difference in the wind counts from the tap to the full wind I think is going to give me the better, more noticeable yield out the end.
Thank you.